This morning we celebrate the sublimity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. And it is true that, that Jesus is the King. Um, it's also true that he's unlike any other king, and he's not a normal king. Um, for example, a normal king um, would have a kingdom, and his kingdom eventually would come to an end. Um, Jesus has um, a kingdom. Um, he is the king of the universe. Um, he is the king of kings, and his kingdom is everlasting. Um, it will never come to an end. Um, a normal king has soldiers and, or knights. Um, Jesus has uh, myriads of angels at his command. Um, a normal king, his, his wife is the queen, and with Jesus, um, his mother is the queen. Um, his mother is queen of heaven and earth. In a normal kingdom, a king will have an, a limited number of, of sons and daughters. Um, humanly, he's only able to have a limited number of sons and daughters. Um, but with Jesus, um, there's an unlimited number. We are all um, his beloved sons and daughters. We are all um, beloved sons and daughters of the king. And there's no limitation on that. Um, a normal king lives in a, in a castle. Um, Jesus says in the scriptures that he has no place um, to lay his head. Um, he doesn't even have a home. Um, a normal king is, is born into riches, whereas Jesus was born um, in a manger, in a stable, um, in a cave, um, into poverty. Um, a normal king, you, you swear allegiance to him. You promise um, to do whatever he says. Um, with Jesus, it's a little different. Um, he gives his life um, for you. Um, he gives his life on the cross for you. A normal king says, you have to serve me. Whatever I do, you're going to, to serve me and my needs. Um, Jesus says, I've come to, to not to be served, um, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom um, for many. A normal king, his crown is made of gold, it's made of jewels. Um, Jesus' crown is, is made of wood. Um, it's a crown of thorns. A normal king, his throne is, is made of gold. Again, Jesus' throne is made of wood. Um, his throne is the cross. And it's interesting when we look at the cross, um, even above the cross, um, you know, Pontius Pilate decided that it would say, um, Jesus of Nazareth, um, King of the Jews. And so our King, his throne, um, is the cross that he died on for us. And finally, you know, a, a normal king is given every honor. And what does Jesus do? Um, he chooses um, to wash his followers' feet. At the Last Supper, he washes um, the apostles' feet. Um, he humbles himself before them. So, yes, um, Jesus is king, but he's a different kind of king. And I think it's really good for us to remember that, um, to have that image in our mind of how, how, in fact, Jesus is a king. And a good question to reflect on on this Christ the King Sunday um, is, you know, have you made Jesus um, the king of your life? Have you made Jesus the king of your life? Have you made Jesus the king of your heart? Um, have you given him your future? Have you given him your plans? Um, have you given him all that you are? And um, when I was um, growing up, I, I played a lot of sports. Um, I like to think of myself as a grade school All-American is what I say. Even though there aren't grade school All-Americans, if there were, I would be one. And in my grade school, you could play six sports, and so I played six sports my seventh grade year, my eighth grade year. In my eighth grade year, we won the championship in four of those sports, and so we did very well. And yet, in the midst of that, I, I always had this clear memory of, of doing well in sports, doing well in school, having a good family, and yet, um, there was this emptiness inside of me. Um, it wasn't enough. Um, I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't happy. I didn't have 
um, joy. And, you know, at that time in my life, my priorities basically were myself, um, sports, and myself. And hey, that was how my life went. Um, I, I graduated from grade school, went to high school, and at the end of my high school um, first year, my freshman year, I had a chance to go on a retreat um, called Acquire the Fire. And at this Acquire the Fire retreat, I experienced um, God's love in a powerful way, um, especially through the, the worship times that we had there. Um, they, they encouraged us um, to give our lives completely to God, to give our lives to Jesus. Um, there was a specific time in which they did this, and, and I made a choice to do that. Um, but there was a struggle within me. I knew that if I did that, it meant um, that I was going to have to lay down um, what I wanted, that I was going to have to actually pray about decisions in my life and not just do simply what I wanted. And, and that was a struggle inside. Was I going to do that? Um, I made a choice to do that. Um, I, I made a choice to, to place my life in God's hands. And, and really, from that point in my life, um, at the end of my freshman year, I was 16 years old. I, I've never really been the same. And, and I am really thankful that I was able to go on that retreat. And then my life changed. I, I did start to experience joy. I'm a joy that, that was so different um, than accomplishing um, victories in sports. You know, I, I think in the end, there's um, two kinds of people um, in the world, and maybe in the church especially. Um, one kind of person um, would be able to say, you know, I've, I've given my life to Jesus. I've already made him Lord of my life. Um, I've, I've given him all that I am. And, you know, a couple signs maybe that you have done this is that you um, spend time with him um, each day. Um, it's a priority for you to spend time with him in prayer. If you've truly given him your life, then you spend time with him. Uh, maybe you even come to daily mass if you're able to. Um, you allow him to, to speak to you um, through the scriptures. Um, if you've given your life to him, then the scriptures are really important in that way. And you find yourself praying um, about decisions in your life, especially important decisions, um, because you want to know um, his will, his plan for you. And so, you know, these are signs that we've given our lives to him. And, and yet, even if you have given your life to him, I mean, most of us, if we're honest, if we look at our lives, we would say, well, um, there's parts of our lives that we've given to him. Um, there's parts of our lives maybe that we haven't given to him. There might be an area of your life um, where you haven't made him king. Um, for instance, if you are struggling to forgive someone, um, whether it's a brother or sister, whether it's a spouse, a parent, um, whether it's a friend or a coworker, um, whoever it might be, if you are freely choosing not to forgive someone, um, if unforgiveness is in your heart, and then you haven't made him king of your whole heart. Um, for some of you, maybe it's your finances. Um, you worry a lot about your finances. Um, how, you know, that's a constant worry for you. Um, you've, you've given in to that fear over and over again um, instead of really trusting God. Um, and that includes maybe even um, giving to the church. Um, you've never really committed um, to giving to the church on a regular basis. For others, uh, maybe it's just simply prayer. You haven't been able to make that commitment, that daily commitment, um, to spend time with God in prayer. Um, you haven't committed to him in that way. Maybe you've been inconsistent at best. And so, again, um, making that commitment um, would make him Lord of your life in that area. And, of course, in our modern society, there's a lot of sinful habits a lot of sinful addictions um, that we can give into, um, whether it's drinking or gambling or smoking or pornography, whether it's buying clothes or other things, whether it's spending too much time on the internet or watching movies, whatever it might be, um, is, is that an area of your life where you haven't made him king? And I guess for most of us, if we're honest, 
Um, there are areas in li our lives where we haven't made him king. Um, the other kind of person, though, is someone who maybe at one point in your life you did make him king of your life, but, but not so much right now. Or maybe you just never made him king of your life. You never even thought about that or never even, you know, really made that choice. Um, it's interesting when we look at um, the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 16, um, God is saying through, through St. John, um, I want you to be hot or cold, and if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. And so um, it's not enough just to come to church on Sundays. Um, God wants our whole lives. He wants our whole hearts. And really, each and every Sunday is a chance to renew that. Um, this Sunday, in a particular way, um, there's a grace um, to make Jesus um, king of your life. And I encourage you, I encourage all of us um, to do that at this Mass, um, to ask Jesus to come into your life and come into your heart in a new way, um, to give him your, your plans and your future. In John chapter 14, verse 6, um, Jesus says, I am the way, I'm the truth, and the life. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. Um, he is the way um, to happiness and fulfillment. Um, he's the truth that sets us free, um, free from sin, free from addictions, free from death, free from Satan, but also free to love and be loved, to free to forgive and be forgiven. Um, he is the life. Um, he wants to give us abundant life on this earth and eternal life with him in heaven. And so, again, you know, I, I have made Jesus I'm the king of my life. I did that when I was 16. I'm, I'm 45 years old now, so that was 29 years ago. And I, I have no regrets. Um, he has blessed me. I'm in good times and bad. He has been with me. I'm in sickness and in health. Um, when I was poor, when I was rich, um, his love for me has been unconditional. Um, his mercy for, towards me has been um, limitless. And his plan for me um, really has been more than I could have imagined. So again, this morning um, is an opportunity um, to make Jesus um, king of your life. And I encourage you to do so, especially um, when you receive the Eucharist um, this morning, um, to just say in your heart, Lord Jesus, I, I want to give you all that I am. Um, I want to ask you um, to come into my heart and to come into my life in a new way. And as we make that kind of prayer, um, he will respond to that. He will honor that request, and yet he never forces us um, to do that. Um, it really is a choice that we can make, and either you've made that choice or you haven't. Um, either you're going to make that choice today or you're not. Um, it's, it's really a choice, and um, my hope for you on this Christ the King Sunday is that you will um, say yes um, to Jesus, our King, I'm in a deeper way than you, than you ever have before. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you for um, being our king, um, for sacrificing everything for us, and for wearing a crown of thorns, for dying on a cross for us. And we pray that we might make you king of our lives, um, every part of our lives, every part of our hearts. And we do this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.